write code that you submit by pull request to the core. Good. We always reject his. I, I, li I like the haves in here. That's, that's, that's always good, the tentatives. And so now, we are ready to roll. I want to welcome you to the Joomla release panel. This is a group of people who get a lot of joy and excitement and release out of each other because they argue and battle constantly. Um, this is all people who serve on our production team that are in charge of making sure that the software that comes out of the project is absolutely production ready, that you may run your industrial strength site on it, and it will never have an issue once we reach <laughs> that public release date. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the other project. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. No. But it's my pleasure to introduce the people who are up here on the panel. First of all, we have the ghost of Christmas past. Robert Deutz is <laughs> released later for 3.7. Uh, you want to give us a one, one breath self-introduction as to your life in, around Joomla. Go to it in one breath. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> He's our God. <laughs> no, go to it. Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm boss of Elite for 3.7, so I, my job is done, and I'm very thankful for this. All right. <laughs> and representing. Yeah. Yes. See, he has no life outside of Joomla. He has no job. You know, he's not gainfully employed doing anything. Never has built a website. All he does is three seven. This is good. This is. I like this complete yeah. rounded resume. <laughs> <laughs> now let's go to let's go to Christmas present, uh, <laughs> Mr. Babker. How is life in three eight? You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Just one breath introduction, self-introduction first. Uh, you put your sniper gun down and now what? Uh, I, Go ahead. I do far too much with too little time. Okay. <laughs> and that, that's, that's really about it. Thank you for giving me one breath. <laughs> that worked. <laughs> and George is our upcoming release uh, manager and uh, we're not exactly sure yet which release number it is yet, do we? Do we know? Uh, 3.994. Okay. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I do not do Joomla as my job. That's enough. That's enough. Thank you. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, yeah. And uh, so Joomla is a free time project that I enjoy doing lots of. Yeah. That's me. Excellent. How many uh, Joomla sites have you built in the last year? Zero. Excellent. So you're perfectly qualified. Absolutely. Excellent. <laughs> Actually, that's not true. One. I'm rebuilding my company's website at the moment. Uh, I thought that was the most appropriate fitting image for, for George. Um, yeah. Yeah, with his favorite flavoring next to him, <laughs> just to keep life fun. Nice. Okay. Among the challenges we have in getting releases out in Joomla is that we try to adhere to a schedule. Uh, we have this dream that we actually have an alpha release that gets fully tested by a whole lot of people that are work in and around the core team and the beta testing group or the bug testing group. We have a further dream that we get to a beta stage, that there's a lot of community people who do full installs of the software and report everything back that's, that's perfectly ready to go. And then we get to that release candidate that's up for one week, and then finally we roll out to the public, and we never have another issue again. What's real? <laughs> Joomla definitely never has bugs. True story. How can we improve our release cycle? Don't let George commit. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about right. Um, how can we improve our release cycle? Um, there's always the constant challenge of getting more people to test the alphas, the betas, the release candidates, I think. Um, especially extension developers, there's still far too many people who basically don't test until the stable comes out. And partially that's down to us because Often, well, alphas by definition are always in flux, but sometimes we allow betas to get a bit too, um, we merge too much during betas, and that ends us up in the position of, um, you know, um, Sanji, do you want to stop playing music? Um, I guess Facebook's more entertaining than us. We can go home now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, getting people to test early, but making sure that we can enable that is always a constant challenge. Basically, is what I'm saying. 
This is meant to be an open panel discussion. I would love questions from anyone who's in here. We have a microphone to bring out to you to, uh, to make sure that everyone who is listening out in virtual land can follow along and hear what's going on. So anyone who's ready, please uh, get my attention and, and we'll get the mic to you. And if you don't, I've got, I've got lots of Phil questions. And actually, I, there's- Please ask. They, they would prefer that you ask because they, I might open it up for them to ask each other and that could get very <laughs> bloody and messy. Uh, so <laughs> anyone who's got thoughts, concerns, how will we talk about releases? Come on up. This one can't get bloody. So in answer to the first question, Sandra, I find your music taste questionable. <laughs> so, say hello to, to Brian. Hey, Brian. Hey, um, nice to see you guys. Uh, it's a little bit of a softball question. Uh, dream scenario, all of us are grateful for the work that you do uh, in developing core. Our work is all based on that. Uh, if you had one dream wish, like, I, you know, I'm the genie with the lamp, you only get one though. What's the one thing you wish the community provided more of for you so that you could be more effective? Beta testing. Yeah. Beta testing. Um, what we said earlier, I mean, there's just too many people that only test extensions, templates, and stuff when Stable comes out. Getting people to test earlier is always better because then we can fix the issues and we don't have to release all these stupid follow-up releases that seems to happen every time because straight after the release happens, someone goes, oh, this broke my extension, this broke my template, and we're sitting there going, well, this is a one, two line fix most of the time, but if we'd known in advance, we could have fixed it. But you know, we can't sit and go and test every extension on JED. So. Anyone else? Can we talk about actually what would make a good beta testing process? We say we've got someone in this community who's who's new to actually using one of our beta downloads. Um, What's the recommendation? Should they be upgrading an existing site? Should they yeah. do that in a Prefer specific environment? Preferably you take a backup of your existing site, upgrade it to a beta release, because it's better to test on as close to a production site as possible versus a clean install, because we all know a clean install of Joomla has very little data, very little extensions built into it, and usually that's just gonna work just fine. It's when you start putting all these combinations of extensions and templates and massive amounts of data in place that you start running into some of the issues that people have run into. Um, just going back a couple of years, there was a funny little bug in pagination, which would have been caught sooner if people had more than 10 items on their install. But since people are testing on clean installs with no data, it's hard to catch those things. Any participation? Any feedback on that? Is there a reason why you are not taking each of your production sites, copying it to development servers, and applying the latest update? Testing against the beta or applying the latest update? Against the beta. It's a lot of websites. It's a lot of websites. Do you do one of them? We wait for stable. Let's talk about stable. What does stable mean? Anyone, any of you want to chime in on this? Uh, <laughs> it means all those things, depending on who you're talking to. So, um, stable um, for us is, well, okay, so once Joomla reaches release candidate phase, a release candidate is something that we feel we could ship, potentially, and it should be relatively bug-free. So at that point, at that point, we already want people to start a testing because we want it to already be relatively bug-free. But um, release candidate means we believe this thing's ready to go. Potentially, there might not even be any follow-up release, um, release candidate things until stable if we can't find any bugs. Well, I mean, okay, let's be honest, there's always gonna be a few bugs that come in, but um, so, I mean, design freeze is pretty much after alpha. So, I mean, I wouldn't say that's stable. I mean, we're certainly not stable until, you know, beta is always going to be a bit more buggy than anything else. 
because we merge a few things at the, towards the end of alpha sometimes. By definition of what an alpha release is, you know, it's unstable, we're merging features, we're merging. Um, but like, I'd say like once we start hitting release candidate, core is, we, it, release candidate tagging for us is the belief that core is almost ready to ship. And at that point, it's important for people to start kind of upgrading their sites, backing their sites up, and upgrading development copies, and just seeing what breaks. Because we don't want to break your sites. Um, we don't want people to find upgrading Joomla to be hassle. Um, so if we find these issues before we ship a stable, that's perfect. Among the challenges that, that I hear is I work with end users and their clients is that stable has various meanings within software communities. And that there's a stable from a core perspective and there's stable meaning I can take my industrial strength website that is receiving 10,000 hits a day and I can ready to go click that one, one click update and nothing should break. That, that it's been through enough testing in our community that, that it's there. We used to have a concept that said the 0.5 release was our long-term support release, and by inference that most of the issues that you would find in the zero and the one release would, would have been solved. So by the time you got to the, the 0.5 release that we had this long-term stable concept that was ready for industrial grade installation. What's our signal to the community today to say that, um, that we're not likely to have a patch in three weeks? Um, that we're, the, we truly are at the one that if you test this and you bring this live, um, things should not change. Um, there isn't one. Um, what can we do about that? You've kind of got two different things mixed up in there. So yes. that five signal was basically saying there will be no more features added to this mainline version yes. branch and a new version branch was starting. We dropped that concept because it was basically arbitrarily saying we will only have three releases of this version branch and then we're going right to another one. And it tied our hands with the number of releases we could do with how long a, a release series was supported end to end and went to a more open model that said we'll, we basically continue building on a release series until we've reached a point where it, it's time to kind of focus more on the future than all the technical debt we've accumulated. And that's kind of where we're at now with the whole Joomla 3 to Joomla 4 transition. Yeah. Now what you're getting at with the whole quick turnaround bug fix releases, uh, generally we try not to do that, but the only time we really do them that quick in succession is if they're like major issues that just you can't use a site correctly otherwise we try to we try to stick to like a four to six week release cycle and if something's really that bad that it's affecting your site there's ways you can patch that and just wait for the next release so what's the message to the major corporation that is using this for a mission critical product is it just simply to wait a period of time no, test before. No. Test, test but test. E either test before. But they can't or test no. in real life without having risk. So. Either test, yeah, either. No. You, 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 take, well, you, take, you take a development site, you upgrade it, and you see if your site still works. If your site still works, then you can upgrade. Well, hopefully those major corporations, too, are using a dev staging live pi pipeline. Yes. You don't, you don't see those types of pipelines in the they don't have stress. They don't have as effective stress testing as the live. Right. That's that's all I'm after. It's just yeah. how do you how do you get the, the weeds picked early on so that someone has confidence? How do, how do we signal that that we think we've had enough volume of hits on enough sites that we really, we, we really don't think anything's coming out of the weeds? Yeah, but it's not. Um, I can't really remember that we had a problem with with uh, too many requests on the site, and that ended up in in, in a problem for the site. So okay. So that's, I, I can't remember. So it's not an issue. We have if, something if, like this. If a corporation really has that much concern, Joomla.org takes over 4 million requests annually. Yeah, very so, good. I mean, if we can run our own network on our own software with that much volume, I think you're okay. Good. 
Yes, please. Um, let me get a microphone. Yeah, the comment is that, that if you're that large, you have in-house expertise that should be able to, to be optimizing your queries and load balancing and doing all those kinds of things. And that's absolutely true. Yep. Yep. More. What are you concerned about? Otherwise, I'm going to throw, throw another one at him. Just Brian. Just to stay on this theme, and I'll, I swear I'll be done after this. Um, so uh, I, I, this is like confession time, uh, because I'm realizing there's sort of this uh, unhealthy relationship that we develop. So our strategy for updating our sites is uh, when a new release comes out, we'll read the release notes. If there are any security concerns that are addressed in that release, we'll apply the updates right away. If there aren't, we wait. So we don't even, when we get to stable, we don't even necessarily update because we anticipate that there's gonna be a couple of follow-on in the next two or three weeks that are gonna address the stuff that didn't get shaken out during alpha and beta. That's horrible from your perspective, right? Yeah, so. Um, there's, uh, be careful what you tell us because there is a series of woods out the back where we can hide bodies. <laughs> <laughs> so, to the, so the thing I, you know, I, I already have my most significant takeaway is one of the ways that uh, my organization can continue to contribute to Joomla is to change our practices in terms of how we communicate with you. But uh, turning that backwards, I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, you can see how that's a natural evolution for our company, right? We're just playing defense all the time. I'm yeah. trying to think if there's something structurally that provides an incentive for organizations like mine to not have to sit in on a panel discussion to go, oh my God, I'm, I'm really screwing you guys in what I want to be doing well, is supporting your work. Part of it's also user perception. Like, there's a perception in general that you see a dot zero release and you need to run scared because it's going to break all the things. And it's not just with Joomla. Um, whereas a patch release shouldn't have that same type of user fear. Uh, anytime you're introducing new features into a platform, there's always a risk of break. So from that aspect, having the concern about upgrading to a dot zero is in some ways justified. Um, but at the same time, we go through so much internal testing and the different uh, milestones leading up to the stable dot zero releases that unless you've got some really exceptional edge cases or uh, a couple times we've run into issues with new features haven't been optimized for higher loads and you've got some of these higher end sites with a lot of data, you generally should be okay to upgrade. And I mean, we've been trying to do a lot to make sure that this kind of production system works this way as well. So I mean, um, when I took over from Michael around 3.4, I started making sure there were formal release candidates before all our patch releases, before we only did that for 0.0 releases. We did alpha betas release candidates for the minor releases, but we never did it for the patch releases. Um, and we started doing that. We've also started being a lot more strict um, about things that go into miners versus things that go into patch releases. We're now much more um, attentive to making sure that if we feel that something is a, um, has potential to cause risk, it's going into a minor release rather than going into patch releases. So that there is, and of course these minor releases have a lot longer testing period. They have a lot, um, and they have more pre-releases so that there's a higher chance that these things get picked up if they're going to. So I mean, for us, a lot of what we're trying to do is making sure that um, these patch releases are significantly more stable than they've been in the past and putting more, um, more of the risk into these point zero releases. Um, but it doesn't mean that they should be any less stable, but it's because we've had more pre-releases, we should have more time to pick up the issues. Good. Thanks. Um, 
would there be a way that we can have an um, upgrade pass from beta versions to final versions, or release candidate versions to final versions? Because it's hard for me if I upgrade, I don't know, 60 pages. Um, first on testing, and two weeks later I have to do the same job again. Um, so it would be much easier to say, okay, I, I install on testing, release candidate, uh, merge this to live page, even if I know it's not the final version, but for me it works, and then I can do a one-click update to final version. Um, he's talking about um, upgrading, whether having the ability to upgrade from a release candidate to a production version, because he can test on release candidates and then upgrade to production. Technically, you can't. The only part, the only reason that we say you can't yes. is because there's some who are on the maintenance teams who have the belief that you can manage the database change files in a way that you can still change them after they've been merged into core. So uh, I think we have this. Those people, by the way. Yeah, so I think we had this with the I think we had this with the three seven betas actually, where the first beta went out, okay. Second beta went out, okay. Third beta, one of the existing database change files had a change added to it instead of creating a new change file. Uh, so that effectively blocks being able to do a smooth upgrade from beta two to beta three because that database change wouldn't get applied and it would cause other issues. Once we get to release candidate, honestly, there's very, I'm not even sure we've ever made release, I mean, honestly, release candidates, you probably can upgrade, to be honest. I've, I there, can't think of a time there when is it nothing have worked. In, there is nothing in the code that is practically blocking a non-stable to stable upgrade. It's just a warning put in the text because of that specific management issue with the database change files. Anything else related to the actual PHP files on the site or making changes, no issue at all. And honestly, if we get to the point where we're still making database struct schema changes at a release candidate stage, something's gone really, really terribly wrong. Is there an opportunity to, in essence, communicate with each one of those releases whether you need to be doing a, um, a complete reinstall versus a, you could do an inline upgrade? I mean, okay, so Just part of the problem with this is, is that, of course, say, it's one of these things that you need to have clear communication and telling people that you can upgrade, but you need to check the X, Y, Z first and stuff is significantly harder for the majority of people who aren't technically inclined than saying um, you can't. I'm more saying, is it, is it practical to do it, for example, on the download button that says this must be a full install versus a, or, or a clean application um, from a previous version versus you can apply over and apply an existing? Should always be apply over an existing. Always, yeah. Could the upgrade pack, well, the upgrade no, I mean, are essentially a full. I'm referring full to a release candidate over a beta. That it can be applied onto a beta versus applied to a, a backup from a production but site. You can. But, but what is the problem we are solving with it? I don't know. So I don't I don't see really a problem we are solving with this is when we allow it to to update from from a from a release candidate. It's how many times you're going to go through the process, right? Yeah, but my company site we upgraded it onto three beta or three eight during beta or no three seven because we were doing a rebuild and we wanted fields, so we started building the rebuild using the betas. So while we're building that soon to be in production site, we were running it on betas and we got bit by that database change and had to go and manually rerun it. Okay, but, but that's a different problem. That's the problem that you cannot, cannot uh, um, build something on testing for, for your new site and then can bring this into production. So I think it's a different problem. 
I mean, so generally, if you're testing release candidates anyway um, on production sites, you've got a problem because, you know, the whole point is this, you're testing this in pre-release to make sure there are no bugs. If there are a bug, you've just screwed your production site up. If there aren't bugs, then, um, okay, you got lucky. Um, and you say that's why we're saying do this on a staging environment, not your non-live site. But <laughs> doing the um, copying process, making a backup of the of the live system, updating the live system, uh, the the, um, the backup or staging environment. Doing this process and bring this live again, you have, I don't know, um, a week, two weeks between um, final, uh, a release candidate and final, and in this time you have changes to the live system normally. So you have to do the same process again. And I would like to test uh, release candidates, but I wouldn't like to do the work twice. Yeah, as I said, it's, it's a different problem. So it's, it's a staging, staging to uh, uh, development, staging to production uh, problem you have. And uh, yeah, it would be good if we, if we can solve this uh, with Joomla, and there are some options you can, can use for, for, for this problem. Um, but yeah, it's a different, different problem. In our last three minutes, let's take a minute each to say, what's your message to all these people? How can we help you? How, yeah. how can we really, truly help you? I think it's, it's, it's yeah, exactly. So test, use uh, Joomla, use, um, use Nightly's if you have enough time. Um, test, test, test. And communicate what's broken. Not only say, oh, there's, there's something broken and don't tell us. Uh, if I can have some slave so I can drive, that would be useful. Um, Michael. Yeah, Michael, thanks for volunteering. Excellent. You're lucky there's a camera. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, what Robert said, um, getting people to test, even if it's just release candidates, so that we can try and avoid these follow-up releases the best we can. I mean, practically, there's always going to be some edge cases that people will find. Um, you know, I mean, even WordPress has these similar challenges, right? Even WordPress sometimes does follow up releases. People don't talk about it as much, but it happens. Um, but the more we can do and the more we can engage to avoid these things and test by getting people to test even just release candidates would be such a massive win. Test, test more, then test some more, then revoke, then revoke George's commit access, then test some more. Um, don't just go on the internet bashing Joomla if you find issues. Uh, don't assume that we're aware of every possible issue you have. If, if this is software written by humans, humans make mistakes. If you're aware of an issue, report it. The worst case, someone says, oh, hey, we're already aware of this, but thanks for the extra report. We're, best case scenario, oh, no, we didn't know about this, but thanks for the report, we'll look into it. So it's a, it's a bit of give and take. Excellent. Well, thank you. Well, put, please express your appreciation to the people who bring us our software. And we are done. Good. And just remember, when it all does go wrong, it was always Michael's fault. <laughs> <laughs>